like thoughts. I've got another one for you. What do you do? If you've done everything right, but still can't hit your goals with marketing, whether that's getting a certain kind of client on a consistent basis, whether that's getting any type of client at all, or whether it's getting a certain number of bids. What do I mean by doing everything right? Well, you know, I've had clients in the past who on the outside looking at me, before jumping on the sales call with them, and when I do a little research, you look at everything they do. They're doing everything right. Great hug, great post, great uh, visual. They've got their website, they've got a podcast, they've got an email list. They're pumping out content like crazy. I my first thought is when I look at them, I'm like, ooh, I don't know what, I, what else we can do. But that's not true. Once we start working together, different clients, different things start popping up quite quickly. So let me share them with you. Are you ready? You sure? Grab a notepad. Grab a pen. Let's go. So, number one, if you're doing everything right, you've got all the channels on, you've created a lot of content, and you're following the script. Well, my number one recommendation would be break the rules, man. Stop following the rules. You know, because sometimes when people do everything right, they they come off as robotic, a little bit stuck. So instead of following the rules and doing everything right, figure out ways to break the rules. Figure out ways to do things different. Stop following the rule book. Stop following the guru. Stop following the course set. Sometimes you even have to ignore your culture. And this includes me sometimes. Sometimes I'm not the right guy for you. Even though years of experience, different types of clients have got a massive result. Even then, you've got to break the rules, man. What do I mean by that? So instead of posting your typical value post, growth post, considering the decision, forget it. Go off on a rant. Start being angry. Start getting upset. Start doing things off the cuff. Maybe instead of talking, if you're in a specific kind of field, stop talking about that kind of field. It's always talking about something else. Maybe you're just boring, and that script you're working on is keeping you locked in a golden cage. Time to break out. Break the rule. It's easier said than done, but I've seen people who done everything, and they including hiring me so they've done everything right. And once they realize, you know what? Nobody can get me though but me. They go off and they start breaking rules left and right. And it's quite freeing and liberating. Not something I highly recommend to everybody, but sometimes, especially those who've done everything right, break the rules. Number two, explore your product market fit. If you've got something that nobody wants to buy, then you've got problems. You can't hear it. In most cases, you don't have to change the product. You have to change the way the communicate, change the way you communicate the product to the audience. Generally speaking, sometimes you might feel really inspired by what you have to offer. You you spend a lot of time crafting your offer. You made a killer offer, but it's not so killer. So you've got to dial back and talk about the hidden benefit. Something that even deeper. You gotta spin it a little bit deeper. But guess what? You can't get there solely from your head. You've gotta go out in the market and research a little bit how your product can get fit, what an actual need is, and fitting the two together. And you see what people have done everything right. It's, you know, you can count on number two being uh, some place to probably show up, which is fixing your offer, fixing the product market fit a little bit better. And the only way I can tell you how to do that is get rid of everything you've tried before. It doesn't matter. It really does not matter how you feel about your product market fit. It doesn't matter how you feel about your offer. It doesn't matter how you feel. Uh, it's the main benefit of hiring you or buying your product. It does not matter. The only thing that matters is that it connects with your market. If no, you've got to mind deeper. You might have to get out of a niche. Go to a different net and mine deeper. You might have to explain it differently. You might need to switch keywords here or that. I can't tell you on the video how to do it. But what I can tell you is I hope clients do that. And results started coming in.
Brother and brother, after that, to try it out, number three, establish an anchor point. You have to remember, if you've done everything right, and you, you're doing all the writing, you're pumping out content, you own multiple channels, email, blah, 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 blah. But the thing that you, you're not getting remembered, right? So you've got to create some sort of anchor point. I'm not saying everybody needs to do that, but certain individuals might need to explore doing that. For example, what's an anchor point? Something to know you by. So the most obvious example for those who follow me is boom, that's an anchor point. That's something to remember somebody by. Am I telling you to come up with your own boom? Not necessarily. I know a guy on LinkedIn who's the blue bow tie guy. Blue bow tie. Always wearing blue bow tie. So every time I think of Apple products, I think of this guy, blue bow tie. That's what he does. He's, he buys iPads or whatever, fixes them up and sells them back in America. And apparently he's very successful. But it strange that his anchor point is when I see an, a Mac or an iPad, I immediately think of them because they're like the emotional connection to the product. There's a no logical connection to the product. So if you want to create an anchor point, you need to find something that's repeatable. Something over, over, over again. That boom, over, over, over again. Uh, the blue bow tie guy, things of that nature. Something that's unique about you that you can kind of brand, if you will. And we use it repeating till that becomes the anchor point and what people remember you by. Keep in mind, what I do, not unique. We are a thousand people just like me. But if you're within my grasp and you hear the word boom, you're going to think of me. Guess what? Boom! Especially in Western culture, part of the extra card. And so uh, I just cemented my way in that way for a very small community on LinkedIn and other places too. So put out an emotional anchor point that people can remember you by. You're probably not going to like this one, but stop being right. The people who typically, in my experience, who are always right, they do right things. Everything on point, they're, they are almost, in another word, perfectionists when it comes to the content. Well, perfectionists in a lot of times are so afraid of being wrong or appearing to be wrong or appearing to make mistakes or appearing to be have a slight blemish on the record. You know what? If you want to come back, come back, get used to being wrong. What do I mean by that? What are some ways you could be wrong? Well, start talking about how you suck sometimes. Yeah, I mean, that's hard for perfectionists to do because they're creating an identity that's always right, always perfect. Never make mistakes. They're so intensely afraid of disappointing other people. They're so intensely afraid of other people finding out, oh, they're human. So you might want to change that and start highlighting mistakes. You've made, well, you messed up, things you've done wrong. Uh, start putting out content that's not always so perfect. It's okay to have some grammar mistakes. It's okay to have some typos. It's okay not to have the best piece of content on the market, particularly organic content, which nobody remembers anyway. Seriously, nobody remembers anyway. Nobody remembers what you did yesterday, last week, last month, six months ago. Last year, nobody remembers. So stop always trying to be right and perfect your content. It's not about perfecting, it's about connecting. And one of the ways you can connect with people organically is not look so perfect. Not do everything perfectly because humans are not perfect. And they connect, they, they relate to you a lot more. If you are 100% human. That's one, number five. Learn to leverage other people's network sometimes. You've done everything right, including what I've said above, including everything oh, one through four. You might need to learn to leverage other people's network. Maybe you need to get better traffic. So what do, what do I mean by that? Figure out ways or hire somebody. Figure out ways to get on podcast. Because when you get on podcast, you're leveraging other people's network. You're leveraging other people's traffic. Maybe you just need to grow more substantially. Maybe you need to be a different pool. Because when you post organically, 
you you building the algorithm one way, but when you get on other people's content channel, other people's platform, that's a different algorithm, so to speak, a different type of audience, a different type of crowd, and that's a, a quicker way to get into different pools, so to speak. So get on the podcast circuit. If you can find a way to collaborate with other people, other companies, other products, that's another way to break into other markets. That while you're struggling to break through the ceiling of your own. So think of how you can leverage other people's network so that you can kind of bust through a plateau if you want and get a different type of audience, maybe a bigger audience. And before you start, you know, punching me in the face, oh, that sounds selfish, you know, manipulate, you know, you see other people's network. You know what? You have something of value to help somebody else with their own network. There's nothing selfish about that. Um, If you have something of value to collaborate with somebody else and most network or whatever the case may be, and it's of value, I mean, it's, added, it's a net positive to either scenario. So there's nothing selfish about this. That's just playing the game. That's not working one or one. And unfortunately for organic social, Sometimes, despite doing everything right, you actually need a different audience or be exposed to different audiences that you have not built. And that's usually other people's audience. Well, that's it. If, you're, if you've done everything right, try to be one of these five things or a couple of them. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Am I off base here or am I on point? Who knows? Boom!